Slavica ran up a big score against a very poor Wales side in Cardiff. My name's Mark, let's talk rugby. Wales lost Dan Bigger, Alex Cuthbert and Liam Williams, you know, the day before and I think the day of the game. And then uh, they were replaced by Costello, Rogers and Kai Evans. So a lot of experience coming out of that back line. And in the game of South Africa, who strike first, they're on top. We have some big carries, get some within about 10 meters of the line. Then put it through the hands. Khaleesi with a great offload to Marks, who goes over to score in the corner. Leboc misses the touchline conversion. It's 5 0 to South Africa. Wales then hit back from the T after South African infringement. Coslo obliges. It's 5 3. Wales then go in search of some more points from a driven mall, but South Africa get in really well to disrupt. It looked like Kitsoff got his hands on the ball and they managed to turn it over. South Africa then begin to impose themselves and they're just completely dominant in the scrum where they win a kickable penalty. It was pretty straight. It was about 35 metres or so out, but um, you know, Leboc doesn't actually trouble the posts with the kick. Leboc, you know, he he's a great kicker generally. He has been the top point scorer in the URC in the last two seasons running but it feels like when the pressure comes on he can be a little wayward from the tee and that could be an issue for the Springboks in the World Cup. Wales then from the you know shortly after restart they win a penalty from not rolling away. Coslo now has a chance from the tee from pretty similar position to Leboc. He splits the post in the 6-5 Wales in the lead. South Africa then from the restart noticeably up up the pace. We got Stamen and Marks with some really good carries, get them into the heart of the 22. Leboc then finds LaRue, who gives a lovely skip pass out to Moody on the wing. He steps back inside and goes over to score. Leboc converts this one over at 12-6, and South Africa retaking the lead. South Africa then obstruct at the restart, and the hand wails a, another kickable penalty. Coslo obliges from this, and it's 12-9. Wales then, you know, they looked... Um, a little bit ponderous up to this point. They finally, you know, spark something to make a break down the right with Kai Evans involved, but then the move breaks down, South Africa get over the ball. We then have another scrum penalty, and that allows South Africa to get themselves into position. They're under 10 metres out from the line. LaRue puts in a delicate little chip in behind. Moody is running for it with Dyer, and you know, neither of them can, can gather the ball. And we have a team overview to see if Dyer actually knocked it into touch deliberately. It looks like Dyer actually did that. He gets a yellow card for that. And then it's also given us a penalty try, which I'm not too sure about because they had a look at, at whether, you know, Moody um, had touched the ball before Dyer did. There was no conclusive evidence on that. But it didn't look like, it didn't look like Moody was going to gather the ball even if Dyer wasn't there, it looked like he just run out, you know, overrun the ball and wasn't able to to actually gather it. So I'm not too sure about the penalty try, but it was given, and it's 19-9 to South Africa. South Africa then a score a score immediately again from the restart. They you know they gather the ball, they spread it, they then they kicks through Mason Grady. He gets there first, and he's kind of carrying it over his own line. Decides he doesn't want to doesn't want for some reason to you know ground the ball over his own line although he's under so much pressure so he decides to just fling it out like behind himself remember he's running towards his own um line so he's basically trying to fling the ball forward towards the south africa line it doesn't come off it actually goes in his own direction of travel and jesse creel just snaps the ball up and he scores a try really weird there like Mason Grady just completely lost you know all kind of um, composure in, in that moment there and just cost his team a try. Leboc misses the conversion from out wide with 24-9. Halftime score then is actually 24-9 and South Africa completely in control. You know people were saying oh you know it doesn't reflect the game. It did reflect the game I felt like Wales offered very little in attack. South Africa found it very easy to break that 
Wales defence and the Wales were costing themselves. And, you know, you can't just say, oh, well, if this player hadn't made that mistake, well, you know, it's the player did make the mistake and cost his team points. So um, into the second half, though, Khaleesi was replaced just after, like a minute or two after the start of the second half. You know, good to see him getting a full half of rugby in his legs after being out and having that, you know, surgery um, as well. Like they were saying that um, most players are out for about a year and like he's, it's only been, I think, three or four months that he's been out. So really great recovery from him. South Africa then, almost had another try there on the attack from the back of a scrum on the left. Um, we have some great hands, get it, to, get it out to the block. He attacks space and then they've got an overlap, but Moody overruns it a little bit and the move breaks down. Wales then win their, their first, I think maybe only penalty scrum from the resulting scrum there. They clear and then Dyer comes back on the on the field, so we're back to 15 each. We then have a second penalty come from the liner after that, and then a third one as well, because South Africa are off their feet. Costello kicks into the corner, but um you know South Africa then replaced their entire front row at the same time. Great South African defense then means Wales can't actually do anything with the opportunity. Costello and Dyer then they combine down the um was it the left wing i think and yeah it was and they break into south africa 22 wales are threatening the line but peter steph the toy he gambles intercepts it then releases creel and he goes all the way he holds off rogers as well to go over to score on the post the buck converts is 31 9 and you know it was a big swing in the game because wales were looking like they might actually get a score to get a bit of a foothold back into the game but you know, it's basically a 14 point reversal there. South Africa then they pile on misery as they go up the line from a penalty. Then off the top from the line out, we have good carry around the corner. I thought it was maybe it was Vermeulen. I'm not sure. They said something about when Stadden in the commentary, but whoever it was, decent carry. Then it's recycled. Peter Steph the toy goes over from close range to score under post. This one's converted for 38 9. You know, it's completely over as a contest at this stage. Then Moody intercepts a pass for from Williams to Rogers in the midfield, and he's in behind it, way to score. This was converted for 45 9. Peter Steph to Toy then, shortly after, he gets held up over the line. South Africa looking just to, you know, add, add points. Uh, back we come for penalty. Wales get a warning about too many infringements. We then have uh, a tap, great uh, pass from the Bock. Puts Wilms outside his man. He goes over to score. That's converted for 52-9. Teddy Williams gets himself a yellow card for collapsing in the build-up to that. Wilms then um, joins him in the bin as he was basically upright in a tackle with, with Dyer. And we have an off-field review for a potential red. Wales, um, in the meantime, they kick the penalty to the corner. They win a second penalty for playing the man in the air. And now it's South Africa's turn to get a warning for repeated infringements. Wales then force their way over the try line. Finally, Sam Parry is the scorer in the corner after a quick tap. Since convert, converted by uh, Kai Evans from it wide, 52-16. We then hear that Wilms's uh, yellow card stays as a yellow and isn't upgraded to a red. He said it was mitigation. And, you know, there's kind of a little bit of... Did the whole own Farrell decision kind of play into that? And, you know, if that hadn't have been a big story at the moment, would that have been an actual red card? Because, you know, he was pretty pretty upright in the in the tackle, but I think now a lot of the foul play review officers are going to actually be looking to find some kind of mitigation because they don't want, you know, their decision to be overturned in a um you know in a disciplinary committee so from there then um south africa win a penalty towards the end instead of kicking up the line like clocks in red they decide to give lebach another chance to kick at the post just maybe for a bit more practice he can't uh doesn't even trouble the post with the kick 
Wales try to run it back, but the ball ends up in touch. Final score is 52-16. So, you know, good win for South Africa. Wales pretty atrocious overall. Um, you know, Wales, they look completely outclassed in that one. Dyer, Evans, Morgan, Coslo, not too many others were kind of, you know, good in flashes. But so many players look like they're absolutely drowning out there. South Africa, you know, um, they put up a big score without actually looking amazing. I think that ability is going to be a real positive for them ahead of the Rugby World Cup, that they don't have to hit, you know, their top gear to actually run in a big score against a team who are underperforming. Khaleesi getting a half a test rugby in his legs is a major plus for them. Moody was good. I thought Colby looked lively in patches. Peter Steph to toy now looks you know, properly back up to the pace of Test Rugby. The whole back row actually looked pretty decent. I thought Klein and Snayman um, looked very good in the second row as well. Front row and the replacements in the front row as well were devastating the scrum in the tight and in the loose as well. They seemed to have the run of the whole thing. Leboc ran the backs pretty, pretty well. I thought, you know, LaRue and Villains that come to the line looked good as well. Dialendi was decent in the centres as was Creel. And, um, you know, kicking for Leboc under pressure still seems to be an issue. As I said, you know, URC's top point scorer two years running, but it's that, you know, so it doesn't look like it's actually an ability problem with him. It looks like it's just a mental thing that when the pressure comes on, his technique suffers. And, you know, that that is something that at a crucial time in maybe a knockout game in the World Cup, you're going to want them to be able to nail those kicks. But I think the crazy thing coming out of this is that if both teams were to improve by the same margin, let's say 10 or 15% on a performance like this, Wales could still realistically make a semi-final because of, you know, there's no one looking hot on their side to draw at all. Whereas South Africa could potentially go out in the pool or the quarterfinal, you know, and that's crazy, like such a quality team uh, that you think like these guys should should absolutely be making a semi-final given like the form they're in at the minute. But when you look at it, you know, it's clear that you got South Africa, Ireland and Scotland, all teams who are at the moment at least vastly superior in quality to this Wales team and in much better form as well. But one of those teams is going to go out at the pool stages. But, you know, Things when we get to the World Cup can completely change and Wales could still be a surprise package.